right from where we left off from the TV. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna do barn fight and all that. Uh, you notice an autosave icon might have a, you might have noticed the autosave icon, and that's because in Madhouse, the second uh, the next autosave after you get up from the dining room table for at the start of the game is right now. So if you don't save before the this point, if you die at any point between the dining room table and finishing that TV cutscene, you will respawn back at the dining room table. Worth noting. Here's simple enough. Crouch here, grab the earth herb as we run by, run around that, crouch here, crouch here, and we are going to run as close to this explosive as we can, block it, and it's going to knock us back the right distance to get, like, thread the needle between that explosive and this collision, and let us run by. I have never gotten a heal from this thing before, which is worth noting, and yep. Yeah. We eat this explosive, we're going to be in danger because of our current health, but we're just going to limp over because we're going to be back to 300 after this cutscene. I know. Fucking password, right? Okay, so after we leave the keycard, we're going to grab the herb and then dump all the stuff we don't need. Okay, so first we're going to dump the things we will never want to take back out again, which is the gun and the three keys. Gun, snake, scorpion, croaky, and then... Uh, it's worth noting, we, what I do is I put in the arm first and then the lever, the crank, okay? And that, by doing that, once I take it out, uh, it's gonna mean my inventory is looking in a good, the crank gonna be in the right spot to menu to it faster. But actually, because I don't have any max heals, it's not. But usually I have max heals here, so it's worth noting. Okay, and now finally your cursor, okay, so this is going to depend on if you do safety strats, but if you do no safety strats, you're going to pick up two cans and then the battery, okay? So you want your cursor to be on the third empty space, which is going to be right here for me. So chem here, I'm going to take a heal. There's a liquor behind you. He will never get to you as long as you keep moving. And now for this part, I switch to 30 right around here. Okay, this part usually goes well, but if it doesn't, you kind of just die on the spot. Okay, so you're going to be running a straight line. The first liquor is going to be in a scripted animation, right? So he's going to go right by, then you're going to run diagonally, grab the chem, and then the second liquor is also usually chill. He's usually just going to jump backwards and be chill. But sometimes he'll take a swing at you and it gets very scary. Let's see what happens. So running straight, he's in a scripted animation. He's good. Chem. He jumps backwards. He was chill. Okay. So if you're like me and you're doing world record, you would turn right and go straight into the barn fight. Okay. But I'm going to show you every, what you can do for the safe strat. The main, the main uh, massive safe strat in the run. I'm going to show it to you right now. Okay, you go into here, and so this is where we have the thing you lose, use the lockpick on. You're going to get three flame rounds, okay? Three flame rounds. There's a chem and an herb here. Okay, since I'm here, I guess I'll just grab them. Okay. And finally, you can save. Okay, I suggest you make all... If you are... If you, this is the save you're going to make to practice, I suggest you create all your heals now and then make your save. However, it's way more efficient to actually put the battery in and while you're waiting for the barn fight to start, that's when you actually would make your heals. Okay, but that's all up to you, figure all that out. So you'll have three flame rounds, but you should only have two separating agents. And that is because in the barn fight, there is another separating agent. You can fast fall if you run at an angle, like this. Okay. And so right now the plan is to get the battery and start the barn fight as fast as possible before you do any looting or anything like that, because it takes a while for the barn fight to start. Battery. Your cursor. Well, actually, because I picked up that extra chem, that's going to mess up my inventory. But my cursor would have been over the battery, but because I picked up that third chem that I never pick up, it's actually not. I run here so that I get knocked back towards this herb that I pick up. 
And then if you're doing the flame round strat, there's a separate agent right here. Okay. And so you'd be using that time to make all your heals. All right. And now it's time for the barn fight. So we're just going to do it right now. Okay, there's a lot to explain. Uh, not a crazy amount, but there's definitely some amount to explain. Okay. The first part of the barn fight simple. You just, what I, I think there's different ways to do this, but what I do is I wait for the first guy to come out uh, and bait out a throw up, dodge it, hit him three times, and then run upstairs. Note the damage, hitting him three times is not actually to damage him. It's to just help with the timing of when to run out the stairs to make them both run up after you. Okay? So just to not overload you, that's step one. Here we go. Once in a while, he will dash out, and so I preemptively block so, uh, to avoid that, but it's pretty rare. Stand around here. And so I preemptively will block just in case he decides to dash out right away, but it's pretty rare. Fuck you too. You run to the right, dodge, hit him three times, run up the stairs. You should see them both running up. Hopefully they don't bump. And so now. So that's, you're going to start every fight like that, in theory, okay? So if you watch, I've basically made an entirely new way of doing this fight. But, uh, oh, I should have saved because I'm going to, you know what, I have an actual barn fight save. I can just revert to that. Uh, so there's a lot of different ways of doing this fight. I've done a lot of research. Okay, the gist of it is you bait them to the bomb, you blow up the bomb on yourself, and you get a bunch of free damage on them, Okay. So the original way of doing it is you make them both run up, you bait them to the bomb, you blow it up, and then you just start slicing them, okay? Slicing them to death, okay? They take roughly 50 headshots each, and you have to get headshots. If you hit their body, then they spray out acid. It's bad. Only damage to their head counts as actual damage because you're not actually killing... You're not killing them by making their health reach zero. You're killing them by making their head health reach zero. Each limb has its own health value. Okay? Only by making their head health reach zero are you killing them here. Like, in theory, it'd be possible to kill them a different way, but it'd take five times as long, so it's not worth it. So the old way, just blowing up the bond when they're close and slicing them. Okay? I realized, though, uh, by just doing this fight a bunch of times, that if they are closer to the bomb and not in an animation that makes the bomb not hit their head, they will take more head damage. Okay, so what I do now is I take extra time to push both of them all the way up in the bomb's face, blowing it up, and it instantly kills them. However, no matter how well I push them, you might notice the first mole that I hit, the first guy that came out, he has 15,000 health. Uh, the other guy has 10,000 health. That should help you differentiate them. Okay, this is going to sound weird, but the guy with 10,000 health has actually more head health. His, his The health bar for his head, which is invis invisible, the SRT does not track their head health, uh, is higher. Okay, so let's just say the the 15,000 health guy's molded head health is like 2,500, and the uh, head health of the other guy is like 3,000. Okay? So it's just really weird, but the guy with less total health has more head health. Okay, and no matter how well I position him, pushing him into the bomb, he always has a little bit of health remaining, okay? The guy with 15,000 health, you notice I got three hits on his head. If I get zero hits on his head and push him into the bomb, he still instantly dies, okay? But the other guy, he always has at least 10 hits of health remaining. So, to do the fight optimally, what I do is... As I'm pushing both of them towards the bomb and getting them into the bomb, okay, I get 10 hits on the other guy, right? So if I'm doing it right, I should get 10 hits on the guy's health over the course of the fight. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 hits. And then once I push them both into the bomb and blow the bomb up, they will both instantly die. Okay, so let's just do a rudimentary fight and see what happens. So they're both running into me, you need a block. Okay. So now I'm going to start pushing them both in. You need to be on variable to effectively push them in. So I'm crouching to dodge their hits, and then I want to get hits on them. Uh, I've gotten three hits on him. 
I, and I hit his shoulder so it doesn't count. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. So he also gets knocked back on the tenth hit, which is convenient. Okay, so there's a little more to explain with how I'm dodging their acid hits. But this is the rudimentary way of doing it. Like this. Okay, that is the double kill. It's a little bit more difficult than it looks. But that is the double kill. That is That was an almost perfect double kill. So yeah. That was the fight in real time. Okay. Uh, but there's a lot going on. Uh, so, the first thing to note is, I said this in the very first video, uh, but this you can only effectively do this fight if your effects rendering setting is set to low. Okay, if it's not, then the collision... Okay, effects rendering... Effe effects rendering... Effects... Uh, the spray of their throw-up, and on low effects rendering, the throw-up has a smaller particle effect, which means it has a smaller hitbox. Okay? And because of that, you don't... If effects rendering isn't low, you have to dramatically run way to the right to properly avoid their hits. If you don't, then just slightly moving to the right will avoid it, and crouching also helps. Excuse me. Crouching combined with moving to the right uh, is enough to dodge the throw-up. Uh, crouching and moving to the left can make it so you get hit. Like, it's really weird. Moving to the left makes it more likely to get hit, while moving to the right is less likely to get hit. So the idea is you want to crouch and move slightly to the right. Even just, like, a tap is probably enough. Okay, so I was crouching and moving to the right when I knew they were about to throw up, and I was alternating pushing each one. Okay, so it, I could have been a little more effective in pushing as I got the hits in, but that's a little trickier. But if I didn't get the 10 hits in, then the guy with 10,000 health would not have died, and I would have had to get 10 hits after I'd gotten up. Okay? So it's more effective to get the 10 hits in while you're pushing them in, you're doing both at the same time, and then you don't even you don't have to wait for him to get up or anything like that. He's just already dead. The second he you blow up the bomb, they're both dead, and the fight's already over. There's no waiting for him to get up. There's no stagger animations to worry about. It's just done. The fight's done. Okay, so that is how I like to do the fight. If you watch my world record, uh, there's a lot of RNG that can make your fight go wrong. Okay, they can double bump, stuff like that. Uh, I will proceed to show another version of the fight. Uh, I'm probably going to cut to it. Uh, I'm going to show you an older ver the old version of the fight, because it's not horrible to do the older version of the fight, where you just blow it up when they get close, and you just slice them to death. It's worth showing that, because it's a very different fight. Two. Two, three, and that just helps with the timing. Oh, also, if you're gonna slice them, it does get you three extra hits, so it's nice. But if you're doing, oh, we got a bump. We have a double bump, which is the worst possible RNG. So we kind of have to wing it when this happens. I missed. So yeah, so the double bump is guaranteed time loss. Nothing you can do about it. Unfortunately, there's just nothing you can do. The double bump is relatively rare, but there is nothing you can do about it. It is guaranteed major time loss. It actually happens in my world record. It's pretty rare. I would say it happens 5% of the time, maybe. Maybe like 2 to 3% of the time. So I'm gonna get, get them a little closer and then blow it up. Like that. So this is the normal way of doing the fight. Oh. So yeah, that guy behind me hit me there. And we just gotta just hit their head till they die. So it's about dancing between them and aiming at their head properly. And I haven't done this in a while, so I'm actually kind of failing at doing this optimally, but it happens. Uh, to be fair, we did get double bumped, which is rare. The double bump is kind of a run over moment. Uh, because it's usually a major, major time loss. It's whatever. 
Okay. Uh, when he, the first guy dies, he always does a grab, so you have to make sure to block it. That's his grab animation. And there we go. So that is the bar fight with slashing. That wasn't a perfect fight at all. And the bu double bump happened, but that's whatever. Uh, so yeah, let's do another iteration uh, where we go for the double instant kill. Just so you can get data of what I'm doing. Crouching, moving to the left. I'm alternating, pushing each one. Uh, if one just threw up, if one is like about to end its throw up animation, and then you are, and you then s start pushing the opposite guy, uh, the guy who just finishes throw up animation will start walking towards you and will get out of the trap you're trying to put him in. Okay, so you kind of got to learn the timing of right as he starts throwing up, it's safe to push the other guy, but then once he finishes, you kind of want to go back to pushing him again because uh, that's going to stop him from getting out of position. So let's see it again. And I'm not bothering to... Just for formalities, I'll grab it. That's whatever. So here's another one. Let's see if I can do it cleanly. The the first one you saw me do was actually extremely clean, except for that one hit. So yeah. Both running up. Hopefully they don't bump. I would say it's relatively rare for them to bump, but it just does happen. Okay, so he did a smaller bump, and this bump is okay because he still walks towards you. So I could have ran right, but that could have made it so the I tripped the explosion, which would have been run over, basically. Okay, this is the wrong guy, I just realized. This is the guy. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten. I think I got an eleven hit there, but it's fine. Gotta push him back, and then I'll be ready. Notice how I healed there, because it was a good time to heal. Very important, you need to be above 640 health when you blow up that bomb. Wait, I, I can't remember exactly. Okay, so, it's important- okay, I'm forgetting the exact bomb explosion value. We'll see. Once we blow up the bomb, we'll see. Uh, but when you, if you successfully do the double insta-kill, and you are at 640 health, let's say, the bomb, I think it does 600 damage, but we'll confirm it, will put you down to 40 health, okay, and now the two fat molded are on the ground dead, and they explode, okay, each explosion deals 20 damage, okay, and so that's enough to kill you, you will die on the ground, you will eat the explosion, take 600 damage, and then take an additional 40 damage from the guys exploding, and then that will kill you. So you have to be above that thresh health threshold to survive it, okay? Very important. Almost got it. Waited for the throw up, started pushing this guy, he throws up, push this guy back in, and they're just about ready to go. And like this. Uh... Okay, yeah, I think that was 600 damage, and so now I will take 40 more damage. It's very important to note. Wait, I only took 30? Okay, that was weird. That was extremely weird. I don't know how I only took... Maybe I looked at the health wrong? Okay, you usually take 40 damage. Okay, that's all you have to know. After you die, after you blow up the explosion, you have to have more than 40 health. That's all you have to know. I will explain the inventory once I get to the box. Uh, because I moved to a different save, this is gonna affect how I set up my inventory, so I'll just wig it in. We'll see. F, 180, F. And you can stand pretty close to the explosion. Uh, so I, at first I was doing this, but I think even this is good. And so you want to be running as soon as the explosion happens because you skip a point where Ethan slows down. Okay, so you want to actually like be 
booking it. If he doesn't slow down, you did good. So you see how he... Normally, Ethan picks up, like, raises his hand and wipes smoke out of the way for a, like, three-second cutscene. Uh, but he didn't this time. So normally, you would just mash F here. Uh, and this is because my inventory is completely messed up. Uh, this is just a random save. Uh, so yeah, normally infinite ammo would not be here. You just mash F and pick up this and then pick up the crank. Like, normally all this would be next to each other. Right? So you know what? Let me pick everything up and then deposit everything to show you what it normally look like. Uh, I usually have one extra thing. Herbs. I usually have herbs here. Okay, I don't have an herb for some reason. Okay, so, well, you're gonna have to play it by ear. Uh, so yeah, let's put everything away. That's it. When, usually when you're mashing F, and you if you have strong heals, normal heals, herbs, and then of course the two key items, you will, as long as the crank is before the D-series arm, you will have your inventory set up to where the crank is here, which is the fastest menuing possible to get to the crank, okay? So when you use the crank, it's going to be F, down, down, F, right? Uh, but if it's different at all, you're going to have to adjust. So before you grab the crank, if you grab it now, it's going to be out of order. So again, this is just little stuff. But if you're cognitively thinking about it, you would actually do this. Oh, and I actually pressed the wrong button. You would grab the arm first and then the crank. And then you have the F down, down, F again. But again, not a huge deal. That's up to you. If you want, you can save right here. Up to you. And now we're going to continue. And here, because of what I said, it's going to be F down down F. And my second F input was not red for some reason. My second down input was a dead input for some reason. That happens sometimes. Uh, yep. And so now we're just going to Jack. The only thing you really have to know is there's a liquor that always jumps at you. So you'll see what I do with it. You always will have to block it. Uh, and the only other thing is if you take a heal here, normally it can be instinctive to take a heal and press space but you actually don't need to do that here and pressing space might slow you down just enough so that these molded that swan right there actually get to sucker punch you in time so if your health value is low enough that you want to heal here after you block this liquor hit as you're going to see once you come back from here liquor is going to come out uh, and he will always jump at you so what you want to do is you want to keep running and then turn block and then keep running that's how it's going to go and these molded are going to be right on your heels, but you can barely, as long as you run efficiently, you can barely make it and they will not hit you. Okay. However, if you feel like you have to heal after blocking that liquor hit, uh, just pressing space for half a second to slow you down might be enough for them to get you. Okay, so you want to take the heal and not slow down at all. Very important. Note, at the start of the jack fight, you will take guaranteed damage, so you might want to keep that in mind before you take the heal. Okay, so after this liquor hit, I'm going to be at 600-something uh, health, right? So I could heal now, or I could heal after in the jack fight after I take the guaranteed blocked hit in the jack fight. And then I'll get the full value out of the heal, right? So that's up to you. Or you could not heal at all in the jack fight, because you get fully healed after, but if you have a lot of heals, it's not really worth it to take that risk. Alright, so we're going to be running, and then we turn and block like that and if you're healing you cannot press spacebar because you will not there's a good chance you won't get here in time now this liquor we usually just t-pose on on him and he usually just jumps backwards we gotta look we gotta watch what he does okay he was chill that time sometimes this guy does not spawn it's very weird and we want to book it straight to uh, Zoe to start the sequence of her making the serum before we do anything else Zoe Zoe yeah. not now we don't have the time. Do you have both ingredients? Okay, and now I'm going to show you the loot downstairs. Right this should be enough, right? Uh, there's already a skip you have to do. Even if you don't want to loot anything, you still want to go downstairs and touch the green item box because it allows you to interact with the serum faster. Funny enough. But you're going to want to loot the heals. There's just no reason not to. You already have to do this anyway, where you run down and do this. And then immediately run back up. Okay. But instead, like, instead of doing this, just do, grab this cam, grab these herbs. It's literally, like, an extra three seconds. Like, it's silly to not grab it, okay? Cam, herb, herb. And, of course, if you 
didn't grab one of the two separating agents earlier and you still have an extra flame round, there's a separating agent right here. Note, I have gotten a heal from these before. I've gotten one heal from one of these boxes one time, so that's up to you if you want to try that. I never bother in a run, but that's up to you. Okay, and then of course, you're going to want to have a save before this fight if you are going to practice it. You do get an in a run though, you should actually never save. Like, even if you're safety saving in your runs, you should actually never save before the Jack 3 fight because you get an auto save at the fight. Worth worth noting. Okay, and before you save, you should probably make the heals, but I'm not going to bother. Alright, so yeah, that's going to be it, and now it's time for Jack 3. So, see you there. It's definitely not going to be as much of a doozy as the Margaret fight, but it's just a longer fight, so there's that. Yep. See you there. Oh, I need it. Wow, wow, we wow, woo! Real bad, Asian. Can you help me find it? Wow, wow, we wow, woo!